great to see you Joe here welcome to another lesson thank you so much for joining me for this one so today we're going to take a look at another song from the Lady in the Balcony album by Eric Clapton and for anybody who's interested I've already covered one of the songs which is called Golden Ring and you can watch that lesson by clicking up here now if you'd like to just watch that after you've watched this lesson I'll pop a link down below so you can kind of watch it afterwards so today we're going to take a look at the song Rock Me Baby and this has been recorded by such blues greats as B.B. King and Muddy Waters. And so if you haven't heard their versions, it's well worth checking those out. But having said that, Clapton does a fantastic job, as usual, of these blues songs, right? So what I'm going to do is what I usually do, and that start out by giving the beginner an opportunity to kind of, a little bit of a gateway into the playing these tunes, right? And then once we've done that, I'm going to come back and I'm going to take a much closer look at what Clapton's doing. So for anybody who's interested in that, stick around. And we're going to be looking at all those little licks he puts in, the way he plays the rhythm, and also the solo that he plays and all that kind of stuff, all right? So let's get started for the beginners so they can get started on some of this kind of stuff, right? So the song is in the key of A, which means that our one chord is an A, all right? Our four chord, we're going to play a D7, all right? And our five chord is an E major, right? Now, you'll probably notice that I'm using different shapes, all right, to play these chords because it's much easier to apply a shuffle when you use these shapes, all right? So, for example, when we play our A chord, it looks like I'm barring the bottom four strings, but in reality, we're only really bothered about the third and the fourth string, right? Because all we're playing for the A are the 5th, the 4th and the 3rd strings. So to create a little bit of a shuffle which will work with this song. And indeed Clapton does this throughout the song, right? So you're not going to be a million miles off what he's doing. So for the A chord you're just looking to play. That kind of feel, right? Now as you can see that ring finger is going down onto the 4th fret 4th string to create that shuffle, right? So just go slowly if you haven't done this type of thing before, so you get this kind of... All right, that's what you're looking to create on the fifth, fourth, and third strings. That's all you're hitting on the A. After that chord, he goes to this D7, right? Now he wraps his finger over the top here to echo this F sharp on the thin string down the bottom there. 
he echoes that on the top, right? By wrapping his thumb over the top and then playing a D7. Now, for a D, anybody who isn't sure about what a D7 looks like, right? You just press your kind of index finger on the second string of the first fret and then use your ring finger and your middle finger on the first and third strings of the second fret. And of course the chords are here as well, right? So nothing to worry about there. So if you can't get this thumb over the top, don't worry about that, all right? You can just play this D7 by itself. Now, if you're going to do that, just play the bottom four strings, all right? So you've got this, all right? And personally, right, I would, if you're a beginner, I would tend to look at playing a more standard D because as long as you're not playing the second string, it's much easier to create a shuffle going... Right, because when you're playing a D7, you can't really do that very easily, right? You're playing more of a... So there's a couple of options there for your D, right? You can either play that D7, or you can play the D major and just kind of... Again, what you're doing when you play the D major is you're using that ring finger on the fourth fret again, right? Albeit a different string, the third string, all right? So... So whatever you find easiest, right? And then you, as long as you know what's happening, then you can always adapt it and progress on to the D7 when you're a bit more comfortable and familiar with the arrangement. And then when we play our E, we're just going to kind of do what we were doing on the A, essentially, only just move it up so we're now covering the fifth and the fourth string. Now, it looks like I'm borrowing them all, but I'm not. We're just concentrating on the fifth and the fourth strings, as I say, because all we're going to do when we play the E I'll play the sixth, the fifth, and the fourth strings. So we get, and not to forget this ring finger coming down again on the fourth fret, but this time on the fifth string. So we have. So that's the kind of the shuffle you want to create on your E, right? And that's it, right? So it's just those three chords. So now let me play you a verse, right? And then once you can play a verse, it just repeats verse after verse after verse. Even for the solo and everything else, those chords remain going round and round and round, all right? So what we're looking to do is we kind of start on the A. Rock me, baby. Rock me all night long. Rock me, baby. Honey, rock me all night long. Back to A. We're going to E now. I want you to rock me, baby, D. Like my back ain't got no bone. Okay, now the thing that I forgot to mention was right at the very end, you're going to play this E major and play. Just as simple as that, right? kind of beats of two so one two one two one two and then you're back into your a to play your second verse all right so try and play it along with me this time i'll play it a little bit slower this time around and then what we're going to do is we want to take a much closer look at what clapton does to play this song all right so two three four rock me baby honey rock me all night long all in A, now D, seven. Rock me, babe. Honey, rock me all night long. Back to A. Now we're going to E. I want you to rock me, baby. D7. Like my back, A, ain't got no bone. Now the E major. Roll me, babe. All right, so, and on it goes, yeah? So that is something that you want to really get down if you're a beginner and you're looking to get started on this song, right? That will definitely get you started. And like I say, Clapton does play that in parts of the song as well, all right? So now we're going to move on to what Clapton does, all right? Okay, so what is it that he's doing here? Okay, well, let me explain it to you. He opens up the song by playing two notes on this A string. <laughs> like so, right? Then what I'd like you to do is place your little finger and your ring finger on the fifth fret, second and fourth strings, and you're going to play, you're going to play those notes and slide up to the seventh fret, so you're going to go like so, 
All right, one more time, slow down. So what you're actually doing is you're starting out on the fifth fret, sliding up to the seventh, then coming back to the fifth fret, playing those same notes, and then back to the seventh fret, and a little slide down if you can. So you've got, and you've got that double A bass note, fifth string open. Then he puts that little bass lick in, right? Fourth string, second fret, index finger, hammer onto the fourth fret, fourth string, and then jump down onto the third string, second fret. So let's play that whole A section. Okay, now when he goes into the D section, he does so by playing that same bass lick. Now you can play that there or you can play it here. It doesn't really matter where, okay, we've, we've looked at it there. But if you want to play it here, you just go onto the 7th fret, 5th string, and then you jump down onto the 4th string, 5-7. So you go. And then once you play the lick, you play the open D string, okay, that's the 4th string. And then he plays. So that's what he's doing there, right? So he's using that D for his bass notes. And all we're doing here really is we're borrowing the bottom four strings of the fifth fret. Sliding up to the seventh and back again. Same kind of thing as what we were doing for the A section, right? And then back up to the seventh. Another two bass notes on the fourth string. Then he plays another little interesting lick where he plays. Right, which brings him back into the A. <laughs> All right, so we've got this seventh fret, third string, seventh fret, fourth string, and then the fifth fret, fourth string. And then he finishes here on the seventh fret, fifth string and then plays the open A string twice and goes back to his. All right. Then you've got the lick which takes you into the E chord, right? Which is again, seventh fret, fifth string, right? And then down here onto the fifth fret, fourth string, and then seventh fret, fourth string, and then finish on that fifth string again, seventh fret, right? And then we're kind of doing exactly the same as what we did for the D section, except we've just moved it up two frets for the E section, right? So we've got. Once we've done that, we play two notes in the D. Like so. And then two on the A. He then starts, once he's singing and things, just playing his basic shuffle, right? And so there are lots of things that you can add to that basic shuffle to spice it up a little bit. Like I say, you've got this fifth string here. So you can go on the third fret, fifth string. So that's three, four. And then down onto that fourth string, yeah? Which is like an E note, right? That one. So what you're doing is... So you've got this option when it comes to the D, like I said, you can play a, a natural D, but Clapton is definitely playing this kind of, which is kind of very, very bluesy in its sound, right? But he's just kind of, I think essentially, if you listen to what he's doing, it's largely just on the bottom four strings. Again, if you wanted to spice it up a little bit, of course you can go on to the sixth string, right? And go three and four again, like same thing as what we were doing on the A string. So you're kind of enhancing the shuffle in a sense. 
Okay, and so one final thing which is worth a mention. Earlier on in the lesson, I pointed out that Eric Clapton uses this E major position as a turnaround where he plays those three groups of two, right? But on occasion what he does is he comes up here and he plays an E9, which sounds like this. That's a really nice chord, all right? Bit awkward to play if you've never played it before, but let me show you how to do it. You want to place your index finger on the fourth string, sixth fret, and then your middle finger is going to go up onto the seventh fret, fifth string, like so. And then here comes the awkward part. We're going to lay this ring finger flat on the seventh fret, barring the bottom three strings. Now, that's quite tricky to play if you haven't played it before, so be patient with yourself, and if you practice it a little bit, you'll definitely get this one down. What you really want to aim to try and do is to get all your fingers comfortable before you apply any pressure, and then once you're comfortable and everything's in the correct place then you can apply a little bit of pressure just enough for it to sound that's the secret yeah like so okay so let's just take a quick look at a couple of different ways we can end the song as well right so probably the easiest way to do that is to just play and all we're doing here is we're coming up onto the fourth string fifth fret fourth third second and then we're playing this ninth shape which we were playing up here earlier on right we've just brought that whole shape down here all right so that means middle finger fifth string third fret and then that ring finger there bottom three strings of the third fret and then the index finger on the fourth string of the second fret play that once and then just an a7 so you've got a You can just play an A, or you could play, all right, so that was just 5th string, 3rd fret, 4th fret, 4th string, and then to the 2nd fret, 4th string, and then just an A, or an A7, as I say. Okay, and if you're looking for something a little bit more kind of refined, then what you can try to play is this. So what we're doing here is 1st string, 5th fret, jumping up onto the 2nd string, 8th fret, 7th fret, 5th fret, back up to the 7th fret, 2nd string, and then jump up onto the 3rd string, 5, 6, so you've got Finish on that 7th fret, 4th string and play like we were playing in the earlier ending. Okay, so there you have, you know, 80-90% of the song there. So we've got all the intro and how he plays that as well as all the rhythmic side to the song um, and also some additional variations and things you can try as well, right? So that should keep you busy for a while, all right? And so we don't make this lesson too long, the next one I will take a look at exactly what Eric plays in his solo for this song. And you don't want to miss this, it's absolutely a great bit of solo guitar playing that he uses. And so there's going to be a full breakdown on that in the next lesson, so as I say, make sure you catch that one. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this one, and I look forward to seeing you soon with another one. And in the meantime, you take care, all the best.